Great Zimbabwe is the name of the stone ruins of an ancient city near modern-day Mazvingo, Zimbabwe. People lived in Great Zimbabwe beginning around 1100 CE, but abandoned it in the 15th century. The city was the capital of the Kingdom of Zimbabwe, which was a Shona, Bantu, trading empire. The earliest document mentioning the Great Zimbabwe ruins was in 1531 by Vicente Pegado, captain of the Portuguese garrison of Sofala on the coast of modern-day Mozambique, who recorded it as Simbawe. Pegado noted that the natives of the country call these edifices Simbawe, which according to their language signifies court. The name contains Zimba, the Shona term for houses. There are two theories for the etymology of the name. The first proposes that the word is derived from Zimba Zamabwe, translated from Shona as large houses of stone. A second suggests that Zimbabwe is a contracted form of Zimba Hue, which means venerated houses, in the Zezeru dialect of Shona, as usually applied to the houses or graves of chiefs. Great Zimbabwe is believed to have served as a royal palace for the local monarch. As such, it would have been used as the seat of political power. Among the edifice's most prominent features were its walls, some of which are 11 meters, 36 feet, high. They were constructed of dry stone, without mortar. Great Zimbabwe was part of a large and wealthy global trading network. Archaeologists have found pottery from China and Persia, as well as Arab coins in the ruins there. The elite of the Zimbabwe Empire controlled trade up and down the East African coast. However, the city was largely abandoned by the 15th century as the Shona people migrated elsewhere. The exact reasons for the abandonment of the site have been suggested as due to a decline in trade compared to sites further north, the exhaustion of the gold mines, political instability and famine and water shortages induced by climatic change. The Mutapa state arose in the 15th century from the northward expansion of the Great Zimbabwe tradition, having been founded by Nyatsimba Mutota from Great Zimbabwe after he was sent to find new sources of salt in the north. This supports the belief that Great Zimbabwe's decline was due to a shortage of resources. Great Zimbabwe also predates the Kami and Nyanga cultures. The archaeological site at Great Zimbabwe consists of several sections. The first section is the hill complex, a series of structural ruins that sit atop the steepest hill of the site. This is generally believed to have been the religious center of the site. The hill complex is the oldest part of Great Zimbabwe and shows signs of construction that date to around 900 CE. The ruins of the second section, the Great Enclosure, are perhaps the most exciting. The Great Enclosure is a walled, circular area below the hill complex, dating to the 14th century. The walls are over 9.7 meters, 32 feet, high in places, and the enclosure's circumference is 250 meters, 820 feet. The walls were built without mortar, relying on carefully shaped rocks to hold the wall's shape on their own. Inside the enclosure is a second set of walls, following the same curve as the outside walls, which end in a stone tower 10 meters, 33 feet, high. While the function of this enclosure is unknown, archaeologists suggest it could have been a royal residence or a symbolic grain storage facility. It is one of the largest existing structures from ancient sub-Saharan Africa. The third section is the Valley Ruins. The valley ruins consist of a significant number of houses made mostly of mud brick near the Great Enclosure. The distribution and number of houses suggests that Great Zimbabwe boasted a large population, between 10,000 and 20,000 people. Archaeological research has unearthed several soapstone bird sculptures in the ruins. These birds are thought to have served a religious function and may have been displayed on pedestals. These birds appear on the modern Zimbabwean flag and are national symbols of Zimbabwe. The ruins of Great Zimbabwe were designated a United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, World Heritage Site in 1986. 
there have only been a limited number of archaeological excavations of the site. Unfortunately, significant looting and destruction occurred in the 20th century at the hands of European visitors. Although they were all too happy to explore and loot the ruins of Great Zimbabwe, in their racism, European colonists thought the city was too sophisticated to have been built by Africans, and instead thought it had been built by Phoenicians or other non-African people. Not built by either blacks or whites. The people who built it were Semitic. They were brown in color and were evidently the Sabaean people who were a mixture of Arabs and Jews. However, despite the damage done by these colonial looters, today, the legacy of Great Zimbabwe lives on as one of the largest and most culturally important archaeological sites of its kind in Africa. Great Zimbabwe has since been adopted as a national monument by the Zimbabwean government, and the modern independent state was named after it.